Hello everyone, and welcome to my Sister Wives For You channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Madison Brush, daughter of Sister Wives actors Janelle Brown and Cody Brown, announced the sex of her fourth child with Caleb Brush, describing the pregnancy as a surprise. Madison Brush is adding another little girl to her crew. The 29-year-old daughter of Sister Wives stars Janelle Brown and Cody Brown, who is pregnant with her and husband Caleb Brush's fourth child, revealed that they are expecting their third daughter. The little one will join big brother Axel, 7, and big sisters Evie, 5 and Josephine, 21 months. I'm excited to announce that baby brush number 4 will be another little girl, Maddie said on Instagram November 8th, accompanying a photo of herself holding her bump. We're still tinkering with names, but Evie is overjoyed. Poor Axel is warming up to the idea, and Joey has no idea what's coming. Caleb and I are just looking forward to having a happy, healthy girl and family. And while she posts updates on her pregnancy, she recently admitted that baby number four was not intended. This one was a surprise. She stated on her new podcast, The Authentic Society, on November 4th. We were getting set to finish. Caleb was speaking with a urologist, and I said, I'm pregnant. The unforeseen pregnancy, combined with the reality star's fourth child, made for a bizarre encounter. It was such a shock and a surprise, she said. I feel like Joey just happened so I've just been pregnant for two years. Maddie, on the other hand, stated that she and her husband of eight years were not startled or unhappy to learn that they were expecting another girl. Caleb and I are nerdy and we were kind of thinking it was probably going to be a girl, she added. Why? Because most often, statistically, when you have two of one, you're gonna have a third. However, the couple's only son was not pleased with the news. Axel was very disappointed, Maddie said of her eldest. Sobbing and wailing, he told us the next morning that he would pray to God to transform this into a boy. And I said, doesn't work that way, friend. Maddie and Caleb will have some extra assistance this time around, as thrilled grandmother Janelle now lives part-time in North Carolina, near their growing family. She's been really really such a good mom, Janelle exclaimed of Maddie to E. News for October. So I said, you guys could really have a lot more if you want. And she said no mom, four is good. However, the TLC star remains hopeful saying, please, I am here to help. Have as many as you want. Shortly after his 1990 wedding to first wife Mary Brown, Cody Brown stated he was ready to divorce. But he led me to believe that he would work on things by saying, Oh Mary, when we move to Flagstaff, this will be a good time to have a new beginning for us. Mary recounted in the September 15th premiere, referring to their 2018 relocation. Like he led me to believe those things. This is what he's done for many, many years. Her primary complaint, she claimed, is his lack of communication and how he really felt and what he really wanted or what he really didn't want and the story that he's been telling for all these years. And while Cody admitted that there were mixed messages, it was only because, as he began to work on things, I'm like, why would I do this? He said. I would not court and date her now. Regardless, Mary's pals were overjoyed when she ultimately pulled the plug in early 2023. They're like, okay, we're here for you, we're supporting you. And it's about damn time, she told me. With her blinders removed, she now believes he has been attempting to get her to leave for years by pretending he does not love her. Because if he can push me out and I leave, he's not the bad guy because he didn't walk away. Years after the family purchased the 14-acre plot of land they intended to build on near Flagstaff, Arizona, Cody said in the season premiere that he was ready to let the dream die. Unable to build without paying the whole $820,000 price tag, which the family supposedly did in 2023, he told remaining wife Robin Brown, I'd almost rather scrap it or sell it, and then just start again somewhere else. I can't talk about that, Robin said. That is so not where I'm at. Second wife Janelle Brown previously told E. News, we just kind of started to grow apart, but it was Cody's failures as a father to several of their children that led her to leave. The big spark for me was when his relationship broke down with my children, and he didn't seem like he would move heaven and earth to fix it. The mother told Logan Brown, Madison Brown Brush, 
Hunter Brown, Garrison Brown, Gabriel Brown and Savannah Brown. And I thought okay, that was what was really holding me here. Even when Cody mentioned reconciliation in the November 3rd show, Janelle refused to consider it. I don't know how I would ever reconcile with him and have him not have a relationship with my kids, she told me. No, I'm going to always choose my kids. That was Cody's justification for not working harder to repair the rifts he was having with numerous of his older children. I don't fit in the family anymore, he complained in the September 15th episode. Noting that he was still fully married to Robin and parenting their five children together, Dayton Brown, Aurora Brown, Brianna Brown, Solomon Brown, and Ariella Brown. He added, and then I have some relationship with some of the other kids, but it's infrequent. And so I'm like, what do I do with all of this? It doesn't feel like a family, despite being totally monogamous for the first time in their 14-year marriage. We're probably doing the worst we've ever done in our marriage, Robin admitted in the season 19 opener. It's been tough between us. He doesn't know who to blame himself or one of the other wives. Cody's feeling a lot of rejection, and so I think he's kind of looking at me going, are you going to reject me too? As a result, she said, I'm on my toes. I'm having to consistently make sure that he's not sabotaging our relationship. The worst thing she summarized, there's no resource to help with the idea that I'm still married to a man who's going through divorces. Meanwhile, Cody was experiencing a confidence crisis saying, I can't look myself in the mirror and say, hey dude, I love you. Robin struggled to watch her former sister wives embrace their new period. They're all moving on, she stated on the October 27th show. I feel like the idiot that got left behind. Add Madison, Janelle's eldest daughter, to the list of children Cody does not currently have a relationship with. I know Maddie hasn't had any conversations with her father, Janelle stated during the premiere. He's not called. She's not called him, and she doesn't have any relationship with Robin. She's pretty much written them both off. According to Janelle, the difficulty is Cody's sporadic interaction with Maddie's children, Axel, Evangelin, and Josephine. She doesn't really want him to have any contact unless he can commit. As a result, Janelle revealed in the September 22nd episode that Cody did sort of cut off communication with Maddie and her husband Caleb Brush whose sister married Cody's brother. When the family started to really dissolve, with Cody not visiting or phoning, Maddie has been mama bear to the extreme, according to Janelle. She has felt like until he can be consistent, and show up, and not be dramatic, that she feels like it's probably better if they don't know about him. While Robin stated that she has encouraged Cody to reach out and make amends, she added, I believe the children should do the same, for the time being. Cody does not appear to be willing to mend the split, complaining that every time he spoke with his daughter, it was a fish for gossip and I got tired of it. During their 32nd anniversary celebration, he was alluding to the fact that he never loved me and he felt like he had to marry me, Mary told her friend Brandy during the September 15th premiere. And I said to him, I said Cody, I said, I know you loved me. And if he didn't, Leon Brown's mother asked in a confessional, why did he even propose? When a single young man meets a single young woman, why would he choose to marry her and simply reinforce and impose love for her when he doesn't love her? How cruel is that? She questioned. To choose me out of a throng and say, I chose you to attempt to force myself to love for the next 32 years? Cody's answer, as revealed in his own confessional, Oh, Mary has her little allegations now. Okay, she may say whatever she wants. I am not going to comment on it. However, he would admit that they never had a honeymoon time. This marriage was on the rocks the entire marriage, he insisted in the October 20th episode. And how would I know that? I had a much better relationship with Janelle, Christine, and Robin. He confessed that he should have gotten out of the relationship 25 years ago. But he persisted out of fear, stating, Leadership will never allow you to marry again if you're discarding wives. Though she was undecided on whether she'd like to build on Coyote Pass or simply sell it off, Janelle noted that step one was paying off the Arizona property. And with Cody refusing to talk to her about the situation, I think I'm going to have to lawyer up, she confessed to former sister wife Christine Brown in the September 22nd episode. Because I think that's the only way I'll ever get any kind of decision out of him.
And Janelle said that without a legal marriage with Cody, I really have no legal rights to make any kind of claim on Cody's stuff. She added, it's not like I'm just calling a lawyer and saying I need to divorce this person. No, it's really complicated because there is no legal marriage. Cody's reason for not speaking with Janelle about their Arizona property was because he no longer trusted her. We will pay off the property when the time comes, he said in a confessional on the September 22nd episode. And I'm not giving you any details about what I'm doing or whatever, because I'm tired of disclosing information that goes through the gossip mill of our broken family. Janelle called the kettle black in her own interview. He leaks like a sieve, she said about. He told me stuff about his other relationships and his other wives that I was like, I don't think you're supposed to be telling me that. When the family's love was still increasing rather than dividing, they would pool their money into a single pot. We would utilize all of our resources to help one person, and then we would all gather to support the other person. Janelle recounted on the September 22nd show. That was how it always worked until about 10 years ago. And now it's all about my estate, and everyone needs to have their own. So when Robin needed a home in Arizona, they all chipped in to buy her $1.65 million five-bedroom spread, which was put for sale in August. According to Robin, the intention was for it to be an asset for the family. But when Janelle suggested that they all put their names on the mortgage, she was rebuffed. Cody was like, no, no, we need to protect. You know, protect Robin's estate, Janelle recalled. So now that she's extricating herself from the family, she'd like her portion of the Coyote Pass proceeds, and I'd like to recoup some of the money I put into Robin's house. But that could be a difficult sell. We were working together for so long, said Robin. And with Janelle claiming she's owed money by them, Robin added, it's like, how do you calculate? How do you figure this out? It's extremely confusing. Janelle complained about the family's failure to pay off Coyote Pass, claiming that Cody claimed to have all these other debts. Despite this, she has seen him acquire other assets such as trailers and home decor. I see all the art on their walls, she stated of Robin and Cody's home. And that's great. I have money and have spent it on stuff as well. Cody, for his part, stated that much of his money was spent on cars, basically had a fleet, and insurance for the kids. And, while Janelle admitted she had no idea how Cody and Robin managed their finances, I used to be shocked at how gorgeous her backyard looked. It was entirely finished. There was constantly stuff in her house. And I was like, wow. Ha. Huh. Bottom line, she said. He doesn't prioritize what I need or want. And that issue finally broke her down. I believe after a while, I began to notice it. And my kids, like my adult children, were becoming very furious about it. Like, what the hell, mom? Robin, on the other hand, stated that once her first marriage ended, she was extremely frugal. I used to be not so great with money, she said on September 22nd. When I was young, I had hard knocks. And then I learned during my divorce really how to budget myself very, very well. When asked about her fellow sister wives, she responded, You just must have had a different priority of where your money was going to go than I did. That's all. At the moment, Janelle acknowledged in the September 22nd episode, while she and Christine, mother to Aspen Brown, Michael T. Brown Padrone, Paydon Brown, Gwendolyn Brown, Isabel Brown and Truly Brown, get together with their broods, there's no contact really with Mary, Robin or Cody. I don't think that's going to change much. During their stay in Las Vegas, Cody described their arrangement of four residences on one cul-de-sac as the best time of my life, saying, Everything was going smoothly, and Maddie and Caleb were around, and it was great to have them around, and I loved Caleb. He was definitely like family. However, things started to fall apart in Arizona as they disagreed on coronavirus-related procedures. When his marriages failed, he claimed, his bonds with his children deteriorated. It just made all those relationships go sour. But Christine said there were concerns long before she announced her departure in late 2021. All the kids that were frustrated were frustrated way before I left, she remarked on the September 22nd show. My leaving didn't change his kids' relationship with him. Cody can still fix his relationships with his children. However, it will undoubtedly require some improvement. I'm so angry about how I've been treated that I haven't gotten past that, Cody told the reporter. 
Here's the thing is I'm not willing to take blame for things that my wife or ex-wife is sitting there telling them that I did. I hope the time comes when the contempt will subside. We'll be able to find forgiveness and love again. Cody said that he and Mary did not know each other very well when they married spiritually and legally at the ages of 21 and 19, respectively. They eventually filed for divorce in 2014, allowing Cody to officially adopt Robin's three eldest children from her prior marriage. When we got married, she was very different, and I think just there's some baggage that Mary had that I didn't know about, Cody stated. Initially, I felt like I could live with it. Claiming that everything was a struggle, he said, I can't live in a world where she is constantly angry at me. However, he was unable to leave. A guy in plural marriage told Cody, if he wants to stay faithful and in the faith, he cannot request a divorce. It's not authorized. So I was unable to leave that relationship. At the same time, I did not necessarily want to end the relationship. I wanted to know if we could save and repair it. Hence the contradictory messages. He confessed of Mary assuming they would work everything out. But every time they were together, Cody added, she wasn't lovely, fun, kind, or intriguing. I'm trying to be curious with her, but I'm bored. To be fair, he admitted that he could understand Mary's feelings of abandonment, but I did not kick her out. Christine, Janelle, and Mary all decided to have me leave the house. Though Janelle and Christine believed they would not need to divorce Cody, since their marriage was never legally recognized, Mary requested an official separation, known as a release, in late 2022. When each of us four ladies married Cody, it was through our church, she said in the September 22nd episode. Obviously, we can't all be legally married, but it was what we called a covenant, so I think it's better to end that because we're not going to marry, and I don't want to be forever bound to him if he doesn't want me. And I'm to the point where like let's just separate this completely. Cody was opposed to the notion, she explained, since he did not want to acknowledge the authority of the church officials. The harm was done so badly that we're not going to reconcile no matter what, Cody revealed of his stance. And so whatever, we are made accountable to God. I don't want to be accountable to this church and all its nonsense. So I'm going to let Mary do her thing, because if I get furious at her, it would turn into a battle. And I simply needed her to go away since it took her so long to understand everything had been done and over for years. A text message discussion over a 2021 holiday gift exchange grew particularly heated for the 18 Brown offspring. It all went awful, it all went south, Christine explained. Cody and Robin and their kids were on one side, and they wanted nothing to do with Janelle, myself, and our kids. And there was a division following this text thread, but it was never about. We don't want to see you again. We don't want anything to do with you, Robin insisted. It was just about like, hey, this got yucky. Her three older children felt the exchange was emotionally unsafe and said they needed to take a step back from the relationship. Gabriel, for his part, hopes they may find their way back together. The thing I want most is just to have a relationship with Robin's children again, he said in the October 13th episode. Aurora was my favorite person to hang out with in middle school, and throughout high school, I would always try to contact Dayton. But I am not hopeful about a relationship with Dad or Robin. I was told directly multiple times, by multiple different people, that I was not accepted, Aurora said of joining the family after her mother married Cody in 2010, that I was not their sister, that they did not consider or see me that way. Her sister Brianna also felt the parents could have done a better job with, you know, connecting us as a family, and it never really happened. Christine isn't sure how they could have extended their arms much further. Robin's kids and Robin were invited to everything, according to her. I would just say, just come in. Come into the house anytime you want. Meanwhile, she said, her daughter Isabel Brown was very close to Robin's kids, and Michael T. Brown Padrone even lived with them for a while. There were hard times and my kids were frustrated, but they always considered Robin's kids their siblings just the same. Janelle gushed about the independence she was given, saying of multiple marriage, when it's working properly, you have this amazing family unit that you're a part of, a community that you're plugged into, you have a husband, a terrific relationship with him, and you have everything correct? And then I have complete independence. 
So for me, plural marriage was an excellent arrangement. According to Janelle, Cody struggled to divide his love after the family relocated from Las Vegas to Arizona in 2018. When he moved to Flagstaff, Cody found it a lot easier to be gone, she said on the September 29th episode. A few of times I had to remind him that he needed to come to my place. She revealed that he'd try to beg off because he was exhausted saying, I'm really sleepy. I said, well, you can rest at my house just as much as you can at Robin's. Janelle described her children's separation from Robin, saying, my children were scolded if they opened up Robin's fridge. Christine's children, on the other hand, were upset because they saw that Robin and their dad were a couple and he wasn't in our home. And Robin stated that her staff felt the gap. Mary across the board was very accepting of my kids and I, but the rest of the family really struggled to accept my kids and I, she said in the show's September 29th episode. All we wanted to do was be a part of this family, but Gabriel would say that he and his siblings went to tremendous pains to integrate them into the family. I think that Robin definitely has a victim complex, he added in the October 13th show, and I don't really blame her for it. I believe that different people find various techniques to keep themselves afloat. But he went on, if she actually believes that we were mistreating her or her children in any way when she was constantly getting favorited by dad, and we were always working on our relationship with her kids, if she actually believes that, then there's no chance of me having a relationship with Robin ever again. Having their father move between four different houses had an impact on Cody's 18 children, he explained during the September 29th episode, mentioning how his and Robin's youngest, Ariella, who was born in January 2016, clung to his leg as he attempted to flee. I had to tell her, there's another wife who needs me another mommy. I have other kids that need to see me, Cody described. And she's just pulling along on my legs screaming, don't leave me daddy, don't leave me. And I'm like, golly man, this is awful. Unfortunately, Janelle emphasized that this is the reality of plural marriage. From the very beginning, she added, my children realized that their father would not always be there. I've always felt that Cody and Robin mishandled the matter with her children. He couldn't be away for more than three or four days because Ari gets so depressed or anything. I feel like that was horrible parenting. Throughout the family's history, the other children have done it and are fine. They are well-adjusted adults. One of the few brown children who remained close to both Robin and Cody, as well as Christine and Janelle, Michael T., a mother of three, served as a peacekeeper during Cody's divorces. Michael T. has been close to Robin since she first joined the Brown family, and she has even invited her to attend the birth of her twins Archer and Ace in November 2022. When Robin first joined the family, I was trying to figure out who I was, and she made me feel special and seen. Michael T. said on the September 29th episode, Robin was there for me when I needed somebody. She was there for me when I needed someone to listen and love me. And her mom Christine couldn't have been happier. When Robin came into the family, and it was obvious that she and Michael T. had a great relationship, it was everything that I hoped for, Christine said on the October 6th episode. When I was so excited about having a plural family, I was hoping that my kids would have a great relationship with other moms. They're purposefully leaving me out of their lives to punish me for a crime I did not commit. Cody explained during the October 6th episode, giving his take on his estrangement from some of his older children. I am only guilty of not falling madly in love with their mothers. Furthermore, he believes his ex-spouses are partially responsible. This gap in relationship with my children is primarily in my mind because of SD talk, he explained. There's this cyclone of disappointment from the family breaking up or whatever, and it's like well blame dad. Dad messed up. But while he may shoulder some of the blame, he takes offense at the name calling. Cody revealed that he was struggling to connect with Hunter, Maddie, and Gabriel, and that one of his kids responded to a text by stating, you are a piece of trash. I'd never talk to you again regardless. In a different incident, he told cameras, I've had one of my kids simply remark, you're an a-hole. I'll never talk to you again. You manipulated and brainwashed me, and it's that venom he's not willing to deal with. I'm not going to reach out forever, he said, noting that he believes his parents should be doing more to help matters. I'm willing to make the effort, 
But somebody else is going to have to be on the other end of that, and make some effort too. Robin found it difficult to observe Cody's isolation from his adult children. When I was little, my parents divorced. She recounted during the October 6th show. He lived with one wife in another city, and my mother lived alone. I remember facing my biological father and asking, what happened? Why? All he did was make a bunch of dumb reasons for why he wasn't there for me when I was younger, which sucked. So no, she wasn't about to let Cody's hurt feelings prevent him from making an attempt. I'm having a hard time not like, feeling like losing respect for you a little bit, she said during their violent on-camera disagreement in late 2022. And while Cody agreed that he could do more to improve his relationship with his children, he stated that he must first mend his heart. Saying he believes some of his children are colluding against me, he revealed. I'm so angry about what has happened that if I talk to my kids, I'm afraid they'll trigger me with an accusation. I am too hot-headed right now. All I'll do is cause more damage. Though much of the family was present when Janelle and Cody's oldest Logan married now-wife Michelle Petty in October 2022, they didn't feel the love. You saw Madison take her kids and scuttle them away from me, Cody said to Robin in the October 6th episode, noting that his daughter had not told him she was carrying her third child Josephine, who arrived in February 2023. She never told me she was pregnant. Maddie doesn't tell her father much, and the two rarely speak. Really, Maddie doesn't have any contact with him. Janelle stated as to why her daughter avoided Cody during the wedding. She is very protective of her children. Cody hasn't been there since Evie was born, and Evie is three and a half. And she didn't want him to just come in and say, Oh, I'm your grandfather. And them go, what? Who is this guy? Cody's opinion? It's an unrealistic expectation for grandparents to be in their grandchildren's lives all the time, he said, referring to Maddie's life in North Carolina. Especially if you move your children to an entirely different coast. I have work in a life in Flagstaff. While it's evident that Cody and his adult children have very different perspectives on their ongoing estrangement. One bone of contention is his need for a mea culpa. After the COVID scare was over, and we all went back to our normal lives, we still couldn't reconcile as a family because Cody felt like the boys needed to give an apology to him and to Robin, especially to Robin, Janelle said of her sons during the October 13th episode that followed. And after it sort of morphed into this, well, they just need to come and talk to me. Cody's problem, Janelle added, was that he thought his children had not been faithful to him. And the most precious person in this family who's given her heart and soul has been disrespected, or some bull's tea like that, she concluded. And I'm like, whatever Cody. Yeah, whatever. Gabriel had a similar viewpoint, citing a conversation with his father. He kept phrasing it like I owed him an apology, he told Janelle. Eventually I was just like, hey, unless you're like, actually ready to have a relationship and fix things, then we're not going to talk anymore. He came back a couple of days later and texted me. He's like, hey, I've been like thinking about what you've been saying. I forgive you, please forgive me. I was like, forgive me for what? Cody only sees Savannah, the youngest of the six children he has with Janelle. It's not very often, but every couple months he'll call and they'll go out. Janelle explained in the October 13th episode. The rest of the kids don't really have much of any kind of connection with him. Savannah, who graduated from high school in 2023, believes her four older brothers have taken on the father figure position, with the teen admitting to Janelle that she would want her siblings to lead her down the aisle one day. I've talked to Savannah about it, and she's like, look, I just have come to realize that this is who he is, recalls Janelle. He's going to be kind of that dad who shows up, and we have a lot of fun and then he's gone. I can meet him where he's at. It's okay. Janelle is less forgiving. I'm just so frustrated with Cody, she said. Look, I've seen this happen. I have several women I've worked with over the years who divorced. And then the father just goes MIA with the kids. Gabriel took it very hard early on in their father-son rift, because Cody was someone who would take Gabriel with him on business trips, Janelle recounted, adding that Cody was a totally engaged father up until the past few years. While Gabriel is perplexed about what he did to enrage his father, he stated during the October 13th episode, I told dad that if he doesn't change and he can't take accountability, 
then I just won't ever see him again. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Janelle said, he's at peace that his dad is not in his life. And you know, that's what I hope for all of my kids. And I think they're all getting here. Cody, for his part, appears to have accepted the situation. I'm really sorry that Gabriel feels that way, he said in a confessional. I have reached out to him multiple times only to get rejected. But it wasn't from a lack of trying on my part. Mary may have been Cody's final woman to leave him. But she legally ended their marriage in late 2022 by requesting and receiving what their church refers to as a release on grounds of abandonment. I know he doesn't like that word, she said on the October 13th episode, because he doesn't feel like he abandoned me. I believe he did. In fact, she believes he largely ignored her until she decided to leave so that he could say, my hands are clean. Cody didn't completely deny having a strategy. I had moved on a long time ago, he admitted in a confessional. But let's just be honest here. I was afraid of what she would do if I ripped off that band-aid. It's because Mary was never loyal to me ever. That's what I've been worried about. It's just kind of reputation. Because when you get divorced, your reputation is trashed. Instead, Mary claimed, it was her reputation that was being destroyed. It's really just sad that Cody's talking about our marriage the way that he's talking about it, she went on. It feels like the narrative has changed with him. But the things that he's saying about me to other people, and the people are believing are not true. Years before Christina left Cody, she discovered they weren't a good match on paper thanks to an exercise suggested by their Las Vegas-based marital and family therapist. Christine was tasked with making a list of qualities she wanted in a husband. She wrote that she was looking for a good communicator, someone who would be present in her and her children's lives, and someone who was attracted to her. And Cody wasn't any of the things on the list, she revealed on the October 20th episode. I told him the list and he's like, I'm not any of those things for you. I said, no, you're not. The letter contributed to her quick realization that now husband David Woolley was the right man for her. Family is his most important thing to him. She said about the widowed father of eight. He's owned his own drywall business. He has a reputation of being honest and real with people. And he's really a great communicator.